Welcome back, once again adventurers, to yet another episode of Let's Play Chaos Child. In the last episode, Detective Shinjo was interrogating the young girl that was found lying unconscious in the love hotel, along with the victim. But the girl, obviously being traumatized by whatever actually took place uh, in that time period, was, well unsurprisingly uncooperative. However, using a particular conversation tact given to him by none other than Momose from Frieza Investigations, Shinjo was actually able to get the girl to open up. Um, starting of course by introducing herself as Hanai Arimura, a student also of uh, Hekio Academy, given the fact that she was wearing that very same uniform. Meanwhile, Takuru was starting to wa finally wonder if he was actually in over his head, uh, both connecting the dots between the recent set of murders with the new generation madness 15 years earlier, and also the prospect of actually getting involved in real life serial killings. Something that is almost certainly most likely going to cost him his very life. But uh, we've already had three deaths so far. And if the timeline is correct, the fourth one is not that far away. But that's enough recapping for now. Um, which brings us to here, wherever here is. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this is some sort of uh, manga cafe. Um, I say that because, of course, of all these uh, shelves of manga books stacked rather neatly, I might add, and probably in alphabetical order. Um, which is very unusual. I've never really... Uh, Although I don't suppose manga cafes would should be all that unusual in Japan. And uh, there is a young girl over here in front of us who obviously is uh, one of the maids of this particular establishment. Although her outfit is fairly unusual. Not the type of garb usually worn by ca cafe maids. Do, don't know. As always, the waitress's appearance and manners were a mystery to me. I bowed to her and went to my seat. Well, uh, hmm. You know, I was going to mention a certain uh, feline cafe made from uh, based in Akihabara, but I won't. Serika was there already, reading a manga, and there are quite a few customers here. And, if I'm actually being honest, the atmosphere of this place isn't half bad. Nice music, too. She was fiddling with her Gero Froggy cell phone strap without realizing it, as usual. It really was a strange habit and a nuisance to the people around her. Café LAX, the preferred hangout of the newspaper club, was just a 10 minute walk from Shibuya station. The owner was a manga fan, and the walls were lined with the stuff. I'm surprised that the uh, walls aren't uh, plastered with pages of manga comics, and uh, there is some graffiti over there, but I can't read what it is. There was free Wi-Fi. The prices were good. And if it wasn't crowded, you could sit there for hours as long as you bought a single drink. The most important part was that since it was in a hard to find spot, barely anybody from Hekio knew about it. Save for the newspaper club, obviously. So I didn't have to 
worry about running into anyone I knew. Sorry about the uh, state of my voice in this particular episode. It's uh, unfortunately got a bit of a cough. You had to bear with me. As usual, there was barely anyone there. Only a couple of proprietors, or customers, sorry, not proprietors. It's a single couple that appear to be in college, sitting at completely different tables. I ordered my usual mountain view and sat down. I remember the last time I've had that stuff. But I'm getting sidetracked. Oh, Taku! So, So, you just started reading a manga without caring what it was about? Huh? It's a bit unusual, even for you, Serika. Or maybe not. Serika went and put the manga back on the shelf, then came back and uh, came and sat back down. That's uh very thoughtful of you. I took the bag containing my uniform from Serika. It was the uniform that had gotten covered with blood at the Love Hotel. That certainly explains it. Well, could have been worse. Could have been uh, kept as police evidence. I'm surprised it wasn't, actually. True. I think the rest of the newspaper club were still at the academy. I nodded. I hadn't felt like it at all. It's probably the best we can do right right now. When I got up this morning, I sent both of them a text saying I was okay. They both sent back responses almost immediately, but neither of them said much about what happened. They probably weren't mentioning it for my sake. At least they're being considerate. And uh, mm, Yeah, Sarah was there as well. She definitely saw everything. Hmm, Perhaps Serika has a stronger constitution than even Takuru gave her credit for. This can only be a blessing. Serika spoke in a normal tone of voice as she drank her favorite, grapefruit juice. She didn't seem like she was lying. Then again, since she's usually the one playing gopher getting photographs and information makes sense that's how she been since she was a kid and then again I just remembered the fact that she too was uh, a victim of the Tokyo or the Shibuya earthquake in which there were multitude of uh, dead bodies, so I guess she had no choice but to adapt. It wasn't that she didn't have any feelings. She just got over them very quickly. Fifteen years is a Taku long time. <sighs> Taguru, however, is still very shaken. 
Now that she asked, I wasn't sure how to, res to answer the question. The waitress brought me my Mountain View, and uh, something tells me uh, we may or may not actually uh, have a proper introduc introduction at some point. I nodded and took it. Was I... okay? <laughs> and bring on the cafe gossip. I wonder who they're referring to. I spun the ice in my drink as I listened to the couple's irritating conversation. Serika silently waited for my answer. I knew that face. She'd been my friend since we were kids. There was no point in trying to hide it. Mm. And Serika does indeed have a very serious expression on her face. Taku is starting to have doubts. Serokit seemed genuinely shocked. Please tell me you know what a bottle or a carafe is. Serika raised her hand and ordered another drink. I thought Yeah, but unfortunately this uh, big chance uh, was a little more than Takuru could handle there, Serika. might be true, but things were different this time, after what I'd gone through. Serika continued, as if she knew exactly what I was thinking. Urban legends and serial murders are two different things there, Serika. I nodded. I just dreamed about it. Uh, so that explains the nightmare that Takuru had in the last episode. I'm wondering, was that hospital the uh, general hospital here in Shibuya? The terror was something special because nobody else had experienced it. Well, that has certainly aged well, and by well, I mean absolutely poorly. Yeah, also, that is not how terror works. Terror is not supposed to be special. Just 
She's dressed in a magical girl get up. Wonder if it's a blood shoot outfit. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, Sarah Cook took a glass of juice and gulped it down. <sighs> well, at least she's in better spirits than Takuru right now. I think she uh, completely forgot the conversation she was just having. Come on. あ、そうか。あ、だからさ、他の人が経験してないことを手に入れたんだからさ、それが怖かろうがなんだろうが、チャンスだって書くなら言うかなって思って。Even then, he was looking for a scoop, but uh, some scoops are just not worth it. Her voice was light as she drank her juice, but the words didn't feel light at all. Something other people hadn't experienced. Something different from other people. Exactly what happened during this hospital raid? Hmm. Probably best not to answer that question. I stared at Serika's face. How much did she understand about what she was saying? She moved the juice away from me. Trust me, Sarika, grapefruit is the last thing on Takuru's mind right about now. I was wrong. She probably didn't realize anything. Actually, she prob wasn't even thinking about anything. She really was dumb. <sighs> uh, naive, maybe, but not. Not stupid. And the gossip continues. I was pretty sure I told her a bunch of times. Well, whatever. Time for a lecture.地震直後の混乱が収まった後大量のマスコミが被災者に対して押しかけただろまだ顔しちゃえるど症候群者っていう言葉がなかった頃にそう、so shortly after the events of the Shibuya earthquake was when people started using the words chaos child syndrome. Which is, uh, to be honest, fairly intriguing. Of course, I've been in a coma for about a year after the earthquake, so I'd only investigated it after I woke up.
Well, the events of the earthquake uh, were fairly unusual. Not that uh, regular citizens would have uh, known that much. And uh, it's at this point in the episode where I'm going to say uh, that, uh, well, there's no other way of putting this. I actually uh, don't like the way I've done commentary over the past 10 episodes, especially at the start of this LP series, which uh, I put out a disclaimer on my channel uh, delving into that. But, um, yeah. Basically, uh, from here on out, I'm pretty much, even though it's already too late to do anything about it, I'm going to avoid uh, any further uh, comparisons between now and the events of Chaos Head, unless they uh, crop up during the story. But it was uh, pretty amazing that uh, after those events, uh, there wasn't actually that much uh, rioting from the citizenry. Nanigaima At some point, the people of Shibuya basically regained their humanity and their compassion of sorts. And who was that person? I remembered what they said word for word. It had left a huge impression on me. We're about to find out what that is. They said exactly what I was thinking. I didn't know who they were, but I admired them anyway. Those feelings were the exact opposite of all the excited, fired up people on the outside. Someone connected to Takuru. Actually sounds fairly ominous. Takuno,両親のこと。あ、そういえば復興祭合わせの飲み、エニさんの連中もくるって。マジで。I was different. I was different than the people who just lived normal lives in Shibuya. I ripped the bandage off my cheek. Probably not a good idea, but oh well. The wound had closed up. Luckily. My face was back to normal. I was back to normal. The case was right in front of me. I had a huge mystery to investigate. I wasn't about to just be caught up in something. As a right sider, it was my job to ju jump right into the middle of all this information, right? Well, seems like Takuru's earlier trepidation has just completely dissipated. I could feel something like excitement mixed with a sense of duty welling up inside me. I 
I couldn't stop myself from smiling. Mata kiken na me ni aru kamo shire nai zo. Oh? Jiken no koto? I nodded. Serika laughed a little strangely. And then, for some reason, she patted me lightly on the shoulder. I didn't know what that meant, but I started to laugh too. Sarika nodded. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I thought I'd turn the microphone off, but... Uh, Uh, clearly, clearly I failed in that regard. Yes, so then I must double what didn't know. She can't get a cocker. Doubt that Detective Shinja would uh, care for Takuru sticking his nose back into the thick of things. Sarah could took out a poker calm. She typed into it with a practiced hand. She seemed to be loading a video file. Makes sense since he probably recorded the whole thing. なんだそれ。これ現場でタクが撮ってた録画データ警察に消される前にストレージに上げておいたの。うん。Very clever of you there, Seraka. Night falls on Shibuya. By the time I got back home, the sun had long since set and it was past 8 p.m. I realized that I'd barely eaten anything since arriving at the Love Hotel and suddenly felt very hungry, so I had eaten a me meal as at LAX. I cannot speak today. そういえば、この間来た時から気になってたんだけど、電気ポットが変わった。前はもっと、あ、ここ物置にしたんだ。Sarah had followed me home. She started to glance around the room and offer her opinions on the way it was laid out. She would open drawers and be surprised, even though there were nothing. In, no, sorry, there was nothing important inside, or look at new files about the cases and tell me their contents at a glance. <clears throat> she always was a little strange like that. She would be surprised by the most obvious things, but sometimes she would show startling insight. And wait. <laughs> she laughed another strange laugh. というより、ただやりたいことはいけるところまでいかないと気持ち悪いだけ。うん。And that is uh, actually a fairly morbid statement, especially coming from Serico of all people. I see, I thought. She was right.
A sound came from my PC. The copy operation was finished. Oh. So the police don't find it. Hmm. Takuru definitely wants to take precautions.私が個人的に使ってるやつだから大丈夫だよ。それでもだ。誰でもアクセスできる可能性は少しでも潰しておきたい。そうだな。お前のポケコンのやつも念のため削除してくれ。オッケー。特に何してるの？ I had a feeling one of these would show up again. She looked over at me while she rifled through my bookcases. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Uh, do we go for the positive? Or do we go for the negative? Or do we just uh, mosey on through reality? It's, uh, yeah, definitely a hard choice to make. But uh, I think uh, since we already experienced uh, several delusion triggers in the past and considering what Takuru's nerves have gone through. I'm uh, think we're gonna give him a bit of a break and just uh, shuffle through reality. Kakonto? Hmm. To be honest, Serika, I couldn't begin to tell you what Kakonto is, although it's not what you're thinking. Are you serious? Once again, I'm gonna bring up the fact that we still haven't uh, been introduced again as of late. Also, another thing to note is that uh, it's been over 14 hours of uh, episode time. We're still on chapter one. Yeah, yeah. Well, apparently, Kinkoto was not a food, this is a uh, tea remedy, whatever. Yeah, that's what i and I'm sure I've mentioned this uh, in previous LPs in the past, but uh, I'm not a huge fan of tea myself. In fact, I prefer most drinks except tea, but uh, I digress. <laughs> oh dear. Maybe you weren't as prudent as you thought. Whoops. I think it's too late for that. I forgot to delete it. So busy. So yeah, too busy talking about the uh, tea. Sarah collected the page on the PC and nodded. <sighs> that was close. I let my guard down because I hadn't thought Serico was coming over. Hmm. 
Something's now telling me that that page wasn't about uh, the case. Or maybe it was. I don't know. I made two more cups of Kakonto and handed one to Serika. ありがとう。元さん、いい人だよね。好きだな、私。酒癖の悪さはどうにかしてほしいけどな。でも、タクが公園で気許してるのって元さんだけでしょ。やっぱりいい人だよ。That's certainly true enough. Was that why? Well, he did help me out a lot. Okay, Sakujo Stayo. Serika put away a Pokecon. All right. It's all for the best. I booted up the laptop next to the wall and sat down in the chair that folded it out into a bed. As I went to load the video file into the player software, I happened to glance at its length. 26分? It's actually shorter than I was expecting, really, but, uh... あの時タクが気を失ってすぐに警察が駆けつけてで私も気持ち悪くて入っちゃってたんだけどいつの間にかタクが落としたスマホを自分のポケットに入れててそれで警察に連れてかれるパトカーの中 so that was it. Come to think of it, I hadn't asked how it had happened. Probably because you've been avoiding that subject. Serika nodded, as if she felt the same way. たまたまだよ。警察に着いた時にまた気持ち悪くなっちゃって、トイレに駆け込んで、そこで会って思いついたの。It's hmm. definitely blind luck that they didn't take the uh, recorder to begin with for the phone. Yeah. I really was. I passed out in the hotel, and the next thing I knew I was at the station. Supposedly I'd walked from the patrol car to my room, but my memory was vague and hazy. I took a big zip, sorry, big sip from the cup to choke down the urge to vomit and slowly let it sink into my stomach. If the recording was successful, then I should see what I'd seen then. It had happened two days ago, but it had left such a strong impression on me that it didn't feel like that much time had passed at all. I took a deep breath and told myself it was time to do this. I looked over at Serika. She seems determined as well. She nodded back at me and glared at the monitor. Okay. I tried to steady my slightly shaking finger as I clicked the file. Moment of truth. The first thing I noticed was that sound. The peaceful sound of the music box that filled the room from that spinning bed. A dark gloomy room 
a curtain in the back and a rotating bed behind it. It was that room. The same emotions I experienced before came flooding back to me through the Blu-ray screen. I think you've given yourself PTSD yet again, Takuru. I could sense my own hesitation from my gasping breaths. <laughs> Sarah could grab my shoulder at the sudden sound. Da was slowly moving toward the back of the room. At some point, my breathing matched the breathing in the recording. It scared me, so I pulled away a little and took a deep breath to isolate myself from the person in the video. I heard that sound. The sound of the wire creaking as the bed spun. I could feel the panic cunning, coming through the screen. I wasn't sure what to do. I could tell that Serica was gulping a little. As I spoke, the camera kept going forward. I could hear Serica's soft, soft gasp in the video. The police officer and that woman were lying on the floor. She's uh, barely older than you, I think. I didn't realize that at the time, but the glass was scattered all around. The camera quickly panned without warning, and we uh, actually got a tip from that. And it's not referring to a frying pan. It's a video recording term. It refers to fixing the camera in a single location while changing the direction it faces. Although I'm not really sure why we had to have a uh, tip for that. Oh well. Now, the man behind the curtain. It was that bed. The silhouette behind the curtain was probably that man. The angle was off and wasn't pointing directly at the bed. At that point, I hadn't been re I hadn't really been aware of the smartphone. I heard a dull thud and the screen went black. It felt like I tripped and fallen backwards. The phone had probably fallen from my hands. Was it black because the camera had fallen face down? Serica's voice sounded like it was a little far away. It was still picking up sound evidently, but of course, during this time, they were trapped. I could hear myself trying to open the door and swearing when I failed. That's right, I'd been fighting with the door then. And then... knocking. My body shivered as, as if it had gone numb. This was... I could hear it. I could 
hear it. It was definitely caught on the camera. Exactly the same way as uh, the events of Utani's death. Someone is definitely on the other side of that door. The police said the surveillance cameras hadn't shown anyone else coming into the room, but I could hear it. That constant rhythmic knocking. Somehow, it made me feel uneasy and scared. Someone had been on the other side of that door. And suddenly the screen moved. <gasps> and there's the victim. It was showing the man on the bed. The screen was blurry, but the man was almost exactly in the center of the viewfinder. Had I picked up the smartphone? Probably. I couldn't remember. In the video, I ignored Serica's voice and kept pointing the camera at the man. I could hear my own rough breathing, and I remembered how I felt then. And then suddenly I heard a snap. And there's Hanai, having finally woken up in her dazed state. The screen moved violently for a second, and then for a moment it showed the girl. Then the angle changed again and it stopped moving. The screen was covered in red blood, but... What I was looking at was probably the room's ceiling. Since it didn't move at all, this was probably where I passed out and dropped it. Just like before, the camera was still recording the sound. I could hear Serica vomiting and what sounded like someone falling over. Oi, and there's the backup. I caught the police officers running into the room. They were asking Serica what was going on. She was probably the only one there who was still conscious. Shortly after, the screen went black. Serica had probably put the phone into her pocket, just like she said. I could hear an irritating noise that must have been the sound of the phone scraping the skirt's fabric. The screen cap uh, stayed black, but it kept picking up the, uh, the nearby sound. Then at the very end, there was a quick shot of the inside of a patrol car. And I think that is the end of the video. I realized that at some point I'd lean my body toward the screen. I sat back in my chair. I'd known what was going to happen, but this was still hard. To be honest, I was lucky that the phone was dropped and a lot of it wasn't clearly recorded. I didn't feel as much of an urge to vomit as I'd expected, but I was still sweating from a nasty, unpleasant feeling. I got down the last bit of liquid in my cup. Only.
大丈夫か I asked Serica. And then. I'm going to say no. No. But apparently, Sarah has noticed something weird. The whole thing was weird. Not a second of it was normal. Sarah can move the mouse to jump backwards in the video. I couldn't tell whether she was tough or simply dense, or maybe just felt like it was nothing but a video, but she advanced through the shocking scenes with no hesitation. Wait a minute. Outside the window. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm not really seeing anything, really. I could see the wall of the Love Hotel across the street from the open window. There was something there. I'm not actually I'm pretty sure that glass was broken unless unless this black spot isn't actually broken glass but uh, a cloth covering the inside of the room or, th or the window Mushikana. No. Somebody put a cloth over the window. She hated bugs. That's of course Kurusu. What was the first answer a bug and her second answer a sensible one? いや、ちょっと待って。なんかどっかで。But where? I switched from my player software to my editing software and then blew up that part of the screen. Damn it. I could make it out, but it was so far away that it was blurry. The resolution was too low. Is it? But what is it? What? I turned around at the loud noise. Someone's coming in. You are Tadaima Kaita. What does it do? Hmm. I think I can hazard a guess as to who you might be, good sir. It was a drunk man with a bottle of booze in his hand. Give me a break. Of course, no one was waiting. Finally, we are introduced to the mysterious man known as Gen, the drunk old culture who has apparently been helping Takuru out in his endeavors here in Shibuya. It's uh, nice to meet you, to make your acquaintance. And I think uh, 
now that introductions are out of the way, it's probably a good time to end this episode of Let's Play Chaos Child. And when we return, we shall, uh, well, do the obvious thing and actually get to know who Gen is and what exactly he's doing here. But that will wait until later. As always, adventurers, until next we meet.